You're listening to RTI Audio, powered by Rocky Top Insider. This is Pancakes and Bacon with VFL, Tyler Kerbison, and Reed Bacon. Hello, Vol Nation. Welcome to a new episode of Pancakes and Bacon. Uh, we have rebranded and joined a new network, RTI, Rocky Top Insider, who some of you guys may be familiar with, um, but we are a part of their brand now. So it's a very exciting uh, new venture for us. Um, on this week's podcast, we are talking about spring practice. Me and Reed got to go to practice, got to watch the whole thing. We've got insight. We've got breakdowns. We're going position by position. A great podcast. Before we get into it, if you guys are watching, please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Um, Leave some comments, too. We love the comments. If you're just listening, rate and review, download and re-download. Follow us on all those listening platforms. Uh, also follow us on social media at Pancakes and Bacon for our main account on Twitter at rbacon 26 read at Kyler Kerberson for myself, and also check out RTI. Um, they put out great stuff, great content, great news about Tennessee. So, uh, yeah, let's jump on into the podcast because we got a lot of exciting stuff. All right. Welcome in, everybody. We have a amazing podcast today. That is a guarantee. I know Reed is happy about it. We're talking about spring practice and all the fun and breakdown that we had there. But before we get into that, Reed, how are we doing, bud? I am doing <laughs> fantastic. I'm I doing would be. I'm doing fantastic. Um, I'm very, very excited to talk to give the people what they want. Um, but as a <laughs> As a fan, I try to relay what I would want to hear if someone had just got to stay exactly. the entire practice. So, um, great day. We're not going to waste a bunch of time on 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 bunch of BS up here at the beginning. Uh, we're going to jump into it pretty quickly. But exactly. as you guys saw in the intro, massive, massive, massive news for Kyler and I. We can't say thank you enough to Rocky Top Insider, uh, to John and Bob, and to the team there. Uh, we've been working on this and 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 finalizing and and, and going through back and forth uh, since January. Literally since January, we told you guys back in January we had stuff cooking. It's uh, March 25th now, so <laughs> it takes so it takes a minute. But lots of good conversations, a lot of effort and energy by by a great team of people. Uh, we can't say thank you enough. The new name, pancakes and bacon. I don't need to explain it. <laughs> this man put people in the dirt. My last name's Bacon, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it, and it's funny. Yeah, it's funny. So um, we owe a lot to those guys. We are so excited to work with their team that they are. They, they put out unbelievable stuff. We would yeah, not exactly uh, have joined them or even consider joining them if we didn't literally love what they do. Um, we will dive more into that, kind of how it came about, all that, but we want to jump into practice. So yep. what we're going to do, we're going to do a quick overview of practice, the very quick, you know, couple minutes each. And then we're going to do our favorite couple players that we saw. And then we're going to do our favorite group that we saw. And then we're going to jump in and do our regular breaks down of each position group. So, Kyler, this is where I want to start with my overview. Yeah. So we have been to practice now four or five times in the Josh Heupel era. Yeah. Every time we've had – great things to say about the, the the coaches, how hard the players work in the environment. And once again, I leave today and I'm just, I love everything Impressed. about it. I love everything, how they run a program. Mm -hmm. um, it is so impressive. All the minor details of how well they do, because there was recruits over there this week and there was a good amount of them and um, how they run that whole process um, it, everything is first class. It, they, like I said, de there's not a detail, um, not taken into account. The actual football part is once again, I feel like it is a great, great culture guys competing their ass off going at each other yeah. in a great way, but it never gets 
over the top or too far. Exactly. You have guys coaching up other guys. Um, and I got into the car when we were leaving and I said, Kyler, I said, I've been, you know, I was at the university of Memphis for a year. I know that culture, you know, I was around the university of Alabama for a couple of years. Uh, so I got to see the best culture that there is. Um, and then I've been around Tennessee really just under Josh Heupel because of Kyler. So I said, Kyler, like, am I thinking too much into this? What's the difference between Dooley, Butch? He didn't really go back there and prove it, but like, am I making too much of of this? Or like, is it really like an awesome environment, culture and first class organization basically? Yeah. And I, I think you're on the right track because there is a difference between what you feel, what you see out there and the Butch era, especially the end of the Butch era. The, it starts top down. It starts with Hypel and how he runs his practices and how he cares about what's going on. There literally was a drill, very beginning of practice. DBs and wide receivers are doing blocking slash block shedding with a runner. Hypo comes over. He's watching the drill. He has nothing to do with the drill. It's not his specialty to coach up these guys, but he's holding his other coaches accountable. Hey, why is there an uneven amount of guys here? Bring some other guys from over this way. I don't want them getting all the reps and getting tired and not giving good reps to the other ones. And it's like little stuff like that, holding things accountable in certain drills. It trickles down. The coaching staff and how they mesh together, how they come to the players and talk to them and help them understand where they're coming from. There was a lull in practice during field goal. They had three more team periods coming and wide receivers all grouped together. And the message to them was, Hey, this is the fourth quarter. Hey, you're, you might be down 21, nothing in the fourth quarter. What the hell are you going to do? How are you going to step up? You know, fingers pointed to the second year guys, the web, and Nimrod, you're not freshman anymore. You're not freshman anymore. What are you going to do now? Um, and just holding guys accountable, saying also, hey, listen, I just want you to put effort out there. I don't want you to concentrate on the results and concentrate, hey, I, you know, I didn't make this catch or, hey, I did make this catch. No, 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 no. What I want is a full-blown route. That's what I want out of you. And then you let me worry about all of the other things and all the other aspects of it. You go out there and work. You go out there and compete. And and let me let me jump in because that's one thing that I've heard the entire time with Coach Heupel, Coach Golish when he was here, yeah. and all the different people is they want to focus on the process and not the result. And so it's hey, don't worry if you're not if if, if it's an overthrow or if the ball's not coming your way or if you make a you know make a drop like let's let we'll get to that point mm-hmm. that 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 result will take care of itself exactly put your put your feet in the right spot get off the line of scrimmage run the right route if if it's supposed to be at 15 yards in get to 15 yards and in like it's the little things and so i'm glad that you brought up about coach hype because i was watching him and there are it's like the most perfect amount of coaching with him it's uh when he he lets his coaches coach yep but then he will go over to a certain guy and will and, and little things like hey like during that exact same drill like he's letting his coaches coach, but then there was one where he went up to one of the running backs. It might have been Dylan Sampson, and he was like, hey, and he was just like, and I couldn't hear what he's saying because I was, you know, twenty yards from him. But you can see that he's still coaching guys up, and it just seems it seems real, it seems authentic, it seems natural. Mm-hmm. It's not coaches that I've been around, yeah, where it's like. Sometimes a head coach, I didn't think they knew what they were talking about. Exactly. You start- can trust him. You right. can trust, like Dylan Sampson, trust Coach Hyper right. that he's coaching him up the way he needs to. Right. There's stuff that I was hearing Larry Porter talk about at the University of Memphis. And I'm like, like, are you just talking to hear yourself talk? Like, or, or, or like, do you not try? Like, do you feel like you just need to do more? Obviously, there's a ton, yeah, of, there's yeah, a ton, yeah. there's a ton of Butch examples where Butch is running, like you've talked about, where it, you know, and it's not beat up on Butch. We're just comparing because he was, you know, one of the more recent coaches that you were around. Yeah, you were I got experience. Right. We weren't there for Pruitt. Right, right. But it's like he doesn't overstep. He's just coaching ball. He doesn't cuss and yell just to hear himself cuss and yell. None of those coaches do that. It's um, it's just, it's, a, it's a great, great environment. Uh, and I'm happy to hear that you feel like I, yeah. what I was seeing is. And like you said, and like you mentioned a little earlier, like that trickles down. And now – 
older guys are coaching younger guys. How much did you see Brew McCoy coaching up wide receivers today? It was all day. It was all day. That's all he was concentrating on. I, I want to coach up these wide receivers. Um, Sprags picking up guys in the offensive line room. Uh, Joe still being a good leader and helping Nico through things. I mean, it, it's all over the all, place. It's all over. I mean, Princeton Vant was at practice. Cooper Mays was – I mean, Cade was at practice. Darnell was at practice. Jerome was at practice. Um, Princeton was talking to the tight ends constantly. Jacob Warren was talking with Ethan Davis and some of the younger tight yeah. ends. You had, like I said, uh, Cade, Darnell, and Jerome – we're, we're all talking to the offensive all, line. All of them. All of them are talking to the offensive line. They're supporting them, helping them. Um, I mean, like, when you have a culture like that where people want to come back, be there, they're welcomed to be there. Exactly. They, they are legitimately allowed to be standing in in basically, like, when you're there, it's like if offensive and defense coach, here's offensive line, here's defensive line, and then you come up, and that's where they're running a rep. And then you got recruits and all these people over here, so they kind of stay. But like Kyler's allowed to be here, like Darnell's in there, like they're they're coaching those guys up. That is unbelievable to see, and it's great that like Coach Ellerby or like whoever's not like yo, like this is me, like yeah, yeah. They're not worried about nonsense stuff. They're <laughs> yeah. they're not worried about stupid stuff. He's not like why you know why is Kate over here doing this? Like they trust to uh, let him do the thing. And then another thing is too is like. Darnell, what kind of better recruit could 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 what kind of recruiter what better recruiter than Darnell Wright right now? And who was he over there talking to? It seemed authentic. It seemed real. He would just go up. He would talk to the recruits. Hey, you know how's it going? Where are you from? What position you play? You know, um, you got you know, it, it's it's just it's like everyone cares about the power T and wants the best for the power T. Exactly. And I love I love seeing that, and I'm happy to hear that it wasn't something that I was. It's a it's a group mindset. Yeah. I I want to make these guys better because they're part of my group. Yeah. You know, there, there's no there's no selfishness. There, no. There, nobody's nobody's. Hey, well, what about me? What about what about what I want? Everything? No, it's hey, how can I help you? And that was a lot, and and that's not necessarily a bad thing in sports where there's some of that selfishness in there because like. Like if I'm playing left tackle, like I want to start over you. That's true. But but if I don't, then it's like, how do I handle that? I keep working as hard as I can to take your spots, but also I'm going to be supportive of you. I'm not going to have ill will towards you because yeah. it is ultimately a team game. And there was a lot of times that I was around football that was like, if someone took a spot, it was like you were their enemy number one. And I've never – ever once felt that in the DB like in, yeah I've never I've never once not felt, while we've been there I've never once felt it with anyone in the whole team but I'm saying like with a group of guys like receivers DBs where there's a lot of people and there's probably some more competition yeah like you've never once thought it was it was any ill will towards they do want the best for each other yeah and like I said the competing is great like they go hard at each other there's some talk and there's some shoving but it never really goes past uh anything personal yeah like dangerous type deal. So once again, I leave so, so impressed and I'm happy to hear that you as the former player felt the same. Yeah, I felt exactly the same. Um, and like you were saying with the leading by example, also not getting upset if someone's taking spots, like the leader of this team in Joe Milton had to go through one of the most difficult situations anybody does losing his spot and sitting behind a guy for a year, then getting his opportunity a year and a half, really, then getting his opportunity. That's a, a great point. So if he does it, what makes you think that you're better than him? He's a leader on this team. You see his athletic ability. You see his his ability and his smarts and everything like that as a leader of this team. You think you're better than Joe? Right. You know, you can't. Right. You can't. He is leading from the front with all of this and with his attitude and his approach to everything. It's it's incredible. Last thing I'll say on it too, because we could sit here and talk about it for yeah. the entire hour. Literally, the entire yeah. hour. It's it's that impressive, and it's so beautiful uh, to see, and it's great to see as a fan. Because I'm like, this is we're in good hands. But the other part about it is, um, hey, I just forgot what I was about to say because I was saying we could talk about the. <laughs> I was I was I was not wanting to continue. Distracted I, yourself. I, yeah, I didn't want to keep continue gushing over the things so we could actually dive in and talk about certain players and groups. I and, know. And things like that. Um, I'll, I'll remember what it was, but It'll come uh, up. yeah, I will. So, anyways, I want to hear. We're gonna do. Uh, who is your favorite couple of individuals? Doesn't matter what group. And then, who is your favorite? All who is your favorite group? Okay. Well, you know me. I I don't want to go chalk. 
I don't want to pick the offensive line because it always is my favorite group because I love freaking watching them and I love how they compete. But as an individual player, I will pick an offensive lineman and say Spragans. Every time I come back, there is a constant with Sprags. He's bringing the energy. He is the one leading through his voice, through his presence. And, man, did he have a freaking great practice. He was locking dudes down one-on-ones. He was moving mothers in team drills, um, double team, like individual drills. They're working with the defensive line. Just great technique. Sprags has got like from two years ago, I think it was like one, one of those practices or camps. I was like, you know, Sprags is great. And he has a lot of energy. And I love the fact that he brings that to it. But he's out of control. He, he He's throwing his head into things. He, he's, he's going too hard all the time. And I would rather say whoa than sick them, which is great. But hey, you need to understand your body. You need to understand your balance. You don't need to be over pursuing on everything. His one on ones impressed me so much. Head back, chest huge, great punches, then collects. I mean, Sprague's had one of the better practices I've seen of an offensive lineman in a while. And I'm so excited that he's still here, that he's still part of this offensive line. It makes me feel great because I, I already have confidence in Cooper. I already have confidence in Jeremiah and Mincy. And now I have an even more confidence in Spragans. So four out of five that I'm just 100% confident on, that's a great ratio to have for that group. Um, Absolutely. Now, if I'm going to pick an individual group that I thought impressed me, I'm going to say tight ends. And if is that what you're gonna yeah, say? My, I freaking knew it. My, I literally we talked about this, and I said, you know what's gonna we always pick the same thing. We always think so similar, bro. Let me let me always think so similar. So first off, I remember what I was gonna say when I was talking about the culture. The one thing that I love it's equal opportunity. I I, I honestly okay. I've honestly I've been to four or five practices now over the past couple of years. It's equal opportunity. It does not matter if you are a walk on. It does not number if you're the number one recruit in the nation. It does not matter if you're a three star, four star, two star. You all get reps. You get all get opportunities. One thing I love is the coaches, and I've said this from the very first time we went, even when our roster looked horrendous. Mm-hmm. Those coaches will coach each person, and from what I can see, what I can see, they coach each individual as 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 well and as hard as they coach someone the else. Exact same. It doesn't matter that you're Kyler Kerbison, a four star, and yeah. I'd be baking a walk on. They're giving, both they're giving both our their equal attention and want you to succeed and maximize your potential. So I love the equal opportunity. And also rotation wise, guys are getting reps with twos and ones and threes. You're getting reps at different positions. The DB room, they're all over the place. Oh, every you're time. you're a star, you're a safety, yeah. you're a corner. Everybody's getting reps at different spots. And then, hey, guess what, Nico? You're gonna go with the one o line this time. That way, you can actually get some good pass pro and look downfield. Right. We're not gonna just stick you with the twos or the threes every time, and then you're struggling to get out of your, you know, you're struggling to look downfield. You're afraid you're gonna get hit, like all that kind of stuff. It's like, no, no, no. We'll switch it up. Equal. We'll move, we'll move things around. Guess what? Here you go. Now you got RB one with you. You know, J- Joe's got RB two. So, so you can work off Jalen Wright or Jabari Small instead of you know, walk on that might be next to you. Right. So that kind of stuff helps too, where you might feel like, yeah, like I'm trying my best, but also like I'm with guys that aren't as good as the first team. No. And I completely agree. And the other thing is, is like I said, equal opportunity. Like we've all, everyone has listened that if you played any sort of sport, I don't care if it was, you know, high school, college, you know, pros, whatever it is, you all know that there's like, times where you felt like someone was getting more energy and efforts put into them yeah. to succeed. And like, listen, we all know that there's always the best players on the team, some that are not so great or whatever. But like, I love the fact that like, if you're on a coach Heupel team, no matter where you're coming from, like if you come out and you play well and you produce and you play hard and the coaches can trust you, you're going to have an opportunity to play. Exactly. So anyways, for uh, we walked up. So I walked up to Kyler in the middle of practice because we really don't stand near each other a bunch. No, we, we split up a we, lot. We try to split up and I came up to you and I said, I'm excited to hear what you think about the offensive line. I said, but dude, I have been so impressed with Spragans. And you go, oh my gosh, me too. And like you and I are like kids in a candy store. We're like, we're like giggling and laughing all and touching each other. We're like, oh my God. But, it, but like, but like, it, like 
he was – so I was talking to Kyler last night as we were, you know, watching some of the March, March Madness, talking about the team, and I and I told him, I said, I hadn't told you yet, but I went back and watched some of the Alabama game, like on Monday or Tuesday of this week. And I said, I'm kind of nervous. I said two things I want to see going into next year is I'm a little bit nervous about the offensive line, and I'm – you know, I want I want Joe or whoever the quarterback is to run because people – I don't think people forget, but like Hendon really did, whether it was breakdowns or design runs, he ran a lot. So that's what we're talking about, kind of what we're going to look at. And and everyone knows that losing Darnell is, is – he's a, he's a top – he's a first-round draft pick. So it's like that's hard to replace. But I look at Kyle and Jerome is as good as a college player as you can have that is not getting the pub for NFL, and that's fine, maybe because he doesn't have the stature or the athletic ability as a guy like Darnell. But I'm like, that's a hard one to replace. And last night we said we love how Javante plays, but it's like for every two or three good plays he makes yeah. – he'll get a holding or he'll be too aggressive and he gets his, he gets his hands whipped and yep. it gets around him. Yep. So the fact that we went today and we both loved everything about what we saw, mm -hmm. he was still the same energy and effort. He was coaching dudes up. He was being a leader, but he was winning every rep last year or year before that he would win a rep, maybe lose a rep. This year it was so consistent. It was so this year was so consistent yeah. and it was beautiful and makes me feel great to see. Now, yeah. now my favorite group, besides besides a couple of players, the, the other my favorite couple of players. So Javante Spragans, Jacob Warren, uh freshman Ethan Davis, mm. tied in, and then Ramel. Like I have I I'm I'm Ramel, yeah, I'm so impressive. I am collecting, I'm I'm saying that I started the fan group of Ramel because Three years practice ago, or two years practice ago, when no one was talking about Ramel, it was Brew, it was Jalen, it was said. And every time I've been to practice, Ramel makes an unbelievable catch. Every time. Every time. And I told you uh, two years ago, I was like, dude, Ramel just absolutely moss him. Last money. year in camp, you told me, you were like, bro, this Ramel just made this amazing sideline catch. Yeah. And it's like, and, and it's then, like, and then we get to the Florida game and he makes an amazing catch. And it's like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, and it's like, and it's like I didn't want to come on last year and be like, guys, get really excited about Ramil because it's like, the, the depth wise, like I didn't know how it was going to play out, but he ended up playing really well. And it's like, you know, Brew was not practicing uh, today, um, but like Kyler said, he was so involved in practice. It so was great nice. to see he was helping young guys, old guys, doesn't matter. He was, it was awesome. But like. Um, the transfer from Oregon, uh, Thornton. Yeah, Dante. Is it Dante Thornton? I don't. I think know. it's Dante. Yeah. Let me let me check here. Uh, Deontay or Dante? Yeah. So he looks great. Looks like a great specimen yeah. athlete. We were wanting to watch him. He was not watch. We we he did not practice today. So if you don't hear us talking about him, that's why. But like he was there coaching dudes up. Um, but like Ramil, it's just. I mean, there were times in team where he just absolutely beat dudes deep and he didn't get the he didn't get the pass because they were looking opposite side. But I'm always impressed with him. So those are the four guys that I was and, and you know what? I'll add one more in there was Jalen Wright. Yeah. I, I love everything about his game. Yeah. He gets he gets the most out of his ability all the time. Like he does. And so so the only thing we've ever had on him and to say that he's not as great is his security of the ball. And that is it. Yeah, no, I mean he runs so hard. There's there and there's also he had a freaking seven yard touchdown today. Yeah, it's basically in basically in practice. But like um in favorite group, yes, is tight ends because Jacob was doing what Jacob should do. He is, you know, super senior. He's got the size, he's got the athletic ability, and he was balling on people. He had he had good blocks uh, in one on ones. He handled business like an absolute champ. Some of these linebackers didn't have a chance to to get around him. And then he goes to one on ones. It's like it's a red zone one on one. It's like, well, what do you think he's going to do? Two yards in slant, he gets somebody on his butt in his back. You can't come through him. And as much as they were trying to come through him or come at the ball, great hand place oh, catch. No. A strong That's hand. what I was going to say. Strong. That makes the entire difference, especially as the tight end. Your size, your your reach. Your your scope of what you can catch. If you're a hands catcher, no one can stop. No, you. no it, one can touch. You. And he could be such. We talked about last year. He could be such a threat. And like Tate McCall was guarding him one on one. Both two super seniors. And I get real quick. Tate McCall. We'll talk about. Him. I, I get why he he like. I know fans might be a little annoyed with him and and frustrated with him. But every practice that we go to, he pretty much has. I mean, really good practice. Like you can see why the coaches play him. Yeah. Um. 
But, like, he had a good rep. Like, he had as good of defense as you could have had on Jacob. But Jacob still made the touchdown, made the catch, great hands catch, you know. And it was just so impressive. And he's such a great team leader, too, so he was coaching up. But then you go to Ethan Davis. And Kyler and I talked about Ethan when we watched his highlight film. Yeah. And we're like, hey, like, this has good potential. I was saying maybe, like, I want a little bit more speed or athleticism. Well, today we go, and I'm like, uh, they're like, it's semi early on. They're kind of doing warm ups. I look, I was like, who's 86? And I was like, oh, damn, like, that's Ethan Davis. And we're like, hey, he looks great as a freshman, mm-hmm. but he oh, is he has a size. He's, he's got that, he's got that little piss and vinegar, uh, like dog mentality in him, like, like a Kamal Haddon, like a Jalen Wright, like a Javante Sp- Spragans. And, and it's like, as a freshman to see that already, mm-hmm. that's why I was like, yo, like, all like I was so impressed with the tight ends that were there. The the, the skill part of his game is already there. No, oh. the 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 route running ability, the the whips, the the uh, catching with his hands, the going up for the balls. That's there. What he needs to work on. He's two twenty eight. That's what he's listed at. Got a little weight on, but he looks good. But he looks good. No, he, he looks look, great. He looks great. He looks great. I, he is two twenty eight though. There's linebackers that weigh more than him. So but I, that's where it's at. Where it's just hey, let's get a little weight on you and let's get your blocking figured out. Tight ends don't know how to block out of high school. No one teaches them. They don't care about blocking with their tight ends. This is a guy that can be a Princeton fan. Was oh, last year. He can. He I, can. He can do those skill things. You're talking about. You're talking about next year as a freshman. Because I'm saying I'm, I, I don't no, know no, about next year as a freshman. No, I don't know. He'll be ready. Do not put that. Do not Princeton. I'm telling you, bro. I think this guy has a chance to be much better than Princeton fan, and that's not a knock on Princeton fan. What I'm seeing this year, dude, he's literally been on campus for like two months. Yeah. And what I was seeing out of him today, like, I'm like, yo, like, he could help as this yeah, next, year. next, yeah, this yeah. upcoming season. So, like, if he's a junior or senior, bro, he, he's, he has the poten- potential to be so much better than Prince of Fan. I'm that, that's my opinion. That's my opinion. I, I, I agree with you. I was just giving something for people to compare and also like, Hey, this is why this is what we think about Ethan Davis. Everyone loves Princeton fan and what he was able to do for this team last year. And then in the skill category, no one really noticed his blocking. It, not to say he was a bad blocker, but that's what I'm trying to describe. Ethan Davis can be that. He can oh, and more and more and more. So um I, I I was I was pumped. I mean, there's not many times that you see a freshman and you're like, good looking size, but then he's also doing stuff at practice. Like running with ones and twos and making big plays already, like making good plays. Now, calm down, don't get super excited. I know I'm super excited, but like it's spring. There's a lot of there's a lot of way to go. But he That's has true. a he has a great opportunity. But even Castle, the 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 transfer, like yep. was was fine. UC Davis. He's like looking good. Like yeah. some good plays, some good hands. That's why I think we both love what we saw from the tight ends. Yeah, because Ca- Castles was like, oh, like who's going to replace Fant that Ha, like has experience and he does yeah. and he was at, like he is very much like plug and play yeah like we can just put him right in like he's smart enough to understand this offense and get what he needs to do he's getting reps with ones you know he's good at he's okay at blocking I think there is a little bit of stuff he needs to work on sometimes I thought it was a little bit of I'm waiting for him to come into me instead of going after but he still has a lot of experience he has good hands he can run those intermediate routes so I, I like the fact that we brought him in and he adds depth. No, for, for sure. I mean, it's, it's, sure. it's great because that was that's a missing piece out of this team is no more fan. Right. So right. where are you going to replace those touchdowns that we got from him? Well, even even how much they use the – like last year, how much they used the tight ends is the H-back to, yeah. be, to be a lead blocker. Exactly. To, to, to block and pass protection, uh, things like that. So anyways, we're going to jump now – into uh we'll just do offense and defense we're gonna do one pod so we're gonna talk about the groups i'm gonna talk about I'm, we'll start with quarterbacks okay that's what everyone wants to know yes i was very excited to see nico in person because mm-hmm. uh, there's so much hype around him um with him with joe me personally it was uh, it was fine like today it was it, it was fine there it's was fine there was nothing sp- this is one practice people it was Wind wasn't the. It's very windy today. It wasn't super windy necessarily at practice. No, but but like there was nothing special. What it reminded me of was the same feeling I got with Taven Jackson last year, where it was just 
I mean, you're trying to learn the offense. Oh, there's a lot of times where Nico's just, okay, I'm going running. You know, I'm not throwing downfield because nothing's open. But maybe there was something open. He didn't notice it right away. It's just, bro, trying to understand this offense completely and take advantage of that stuff and then also dealing with the rush and people coming at you, like, it's a lot faster than high school ball. And young guys, what usually ends up happening – is they don't throw the ball. They start running because that's what they're used to. When it, when they didn't have their guy open, they ran immediately. Right. And I thought it was a fine practice. I thought uh, he had some it, good throws. I, I There wasn't a, a holy splash. shit, yeah, like yeah. what was it? Like that was incredible. And there wasn't any that I was like, wow, that was bad. Yeah. So it's like he had a good practice. I wouldn't say it's great. I wouldn't say it's bad. It was fine. It was fine. But I felt like, I mean, the most impressive play that I saw from Nico was it was like, I don't know if it was a bad snap or if it was a bad exchange. I looked and the ball's on the ground when they were doing team, red zone team, and he and the ball's on the ground. He picks it up, gets in the end zone. Like it was a nice, headsy, quick athletic play. So I was like, okay, glad, good to see that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like there were some balls that were like a little high. Then there were some maybe some pretty good ones. It, it just it was fine. Like, and that's the that's the scary thing and the weird thing about hype is because when there's so much hype around someone, you show up and you feel like they're supposed to go a hundred of a hundred, no incompletions, yeah. all good passes, all that. But like that necessarily wasn't the case. Like it was just it was fine. Same thing with Joe for me t- today. Like Joe's always been a good presence at practice. He's always uh, locked in. He's always been a good leader. He does all those intangibles well, but he often, he did not set the world on fire today practice at all. I thought he had some overshots. I thought um, I thought the deep ball as a, as a whole, as a team, wasn't where we needed it to be today. And, th- and that's, that's okay. Yeah. I felt like maybe some of the out, you know, some of the, I'm not saying necessarily it's an out route, but I'm saying some of the throws towards the boundaries uh, we're all pretty good from whether it was Nico or Joe or Gaston Moore or whoever. Mm-hmm. Like I said, the 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 receivers had a couple times where they were open, beat somebody deep, and maybe the ball wasn't where it needed to be. Um, yeah, but it, immediately there was one throw that I'm thinking of. Squirrels heading down the middle, and Joe overthrows him. And it's it's very much – it was almost like, hey, I thought you were going to be going straight instead of kind of angling out towards the hash. Like it was like – it was a miss big time. As soon as that play is over, as soon as that team is over, where does Joe go? He goes over to Squirrel, starts talking to him. All right. What did you see? Where were you headed? Why would you do this? Perfect. That's what we need. Yeah. That's what you, that, That's the only way that you're going to get better. So they're automatically, hey, let's talk to each other. Let's figure this out. Joe wants to be a good quarterback. He wants to hit those guys on the deep balls because – those guys, he wants to get them touchdowns. It's a, it's a, they're your boys. It's such an important part of the offense, too. Yeah, it's so important. I mean, hitting on those deep shots is is massive for the type of offense this is. And I mean, yeah, they still had Ramel, still had a nice deep one. Um, they had some nice intermediate, like kind of red zone, like legit red zone, meaning like uh, it, we're hey, we're in, we're in the red category. We're twenty five yards out. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not talking we're at the five or the four. I'm talking like. 20, 25 yards out, we had some nice – there was some nice connections, some nice throws. Um, I'm just saying, personally, I didn't leave practice like, wow, Joe and Nico just made me feel amazing. Yeah, it wasn't but, like, hey, but, that's going to be a Heisman winner. Right. Yeah. But I will say this, too. Last year, fall camp, I could see a big difference in Hendon from from spring to, 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 fall, to camp. fall camp, just his whole demeanor – the team around him and all that, but like he necessarily didn't light the world on fire either. No. Um hit, Hell, hit, Joe hit, was a better practice player than Hendon. Right, was. right. So it's like it's not it's not anything that's a big deal. We're just relaying what we saw. So do you have any that that's how I feel about the quarterbacks? Quarterbacks as a whole, it was it was fine. It yeah, was, it was fine. That the, the, there's good throws that they made, bad throws that they made. Like Nico had a great throw to um Leacock, the fresh and wide receiver, perfect throw to him, dropped it. And it's like all right, well, and, hey, and pick it up. Like, let's go back to the don't, next one. Don't let that sound bad, Nathan. Nathan, yeah. had a, Nathan had a good practice. Yeah, he's still he's, a good practice. He had a good practice. I mean, um, it was one drop, and it, and it wasn't like it wasn't like a concentration horrendous drop. Like he still had to kind of like he was going not a dive, but he was kind of lunging. falling and lunging a yeah, little bit for yeah. it. Um, 
But yeah, I, I I think it was fine from the quarterback group. Yes, nothing was on fire. Uh, running back group, we'll say this: you you already mentioned Jalen Wright having that seventy yard bomb. It was a great run, and I'm gonna tell you, I, we were on the sideline of the offense, and right when he busted that, Brew McCoy, Thornton, uh, Jack Jancic, and some other the receivers that were over there, kind of coaching people up, talking, but they they turned they jokingly looked, but we're also serious, like. We can be a running team. Hey, we don't have to pass. <laughs> you know, like we can run. Like we, hey, bombs, bombs look great, but we can do that. We can, we can run too. Yeah, and that's coming from the receivers. That's exactly. coming. You know, Brew and and Thornton are two guys that are probably going to be starters next year. I mean, well, Brew definitely is. I'm assuming Thornton's going to get a lot. Yeah, of play. I, t- I do too. So, anyways, what did you see from the running back position? I loved. Um, I love the way Bishop looked. I, I liked how smooth he was. I thought he did well in some uh, like grouped individual drills when you know RVs are are trying to block the linebackers. And you're talking, about, you're talking about Deshaun Bishop. Yeah, Deshaun Bishop. So or RVs trying to you know get a little juke on linebacker. I thought he did very well in those drills. And then when it came to team, I thought he was able to find where he wanted to go. He was he's a shorter guy. He almost hides back behind there, and it's not easy to tackle him. Guys were kind of falling off him a little bit because he's thick. He's a thick guy, and he's not afraid to lay the hammer on people. He got a good run going, was going up to safety, and I can't remember who it was. Was it Charles? I think it was turn time. Okay. It might have been turn time. What does Bishop do? Lowers his shoulder, yeah. tries to run him over. Yeah, and nice. I love that attitude out of a running back. So I thought he had a great practice. One thing that I, I'm upset – is Cam Seldon didn't get as many reps. He is on a limited uh, practice schedule. He had a red jersey on. He was doing some things, but not everything. I just wanted to see more of him. Hey, it looks I good. wanted to see him. I wanted to see him with more routes. You know, I wanted to see him get the ball in team, and it just didn't seem like he got as many opportunities, and that's fine. He's He's the one guy that can be – the the different piece in the room because you got Jabari Small. We all know what we're getting from Jabari Small. Runs hard, good player. We all know what Dylan Sampson's going to do. We all know what Jalen Wright's going to do. And we all know how Jalen Wright's going to run. And then, like you said, Deshaun Bishop, which I don't necessarily see maybe him playing next year unless there's some injuries. But I was still impressed for a freshman exactly. who's only been on campus for, you know, a couple months. But um, Cam is that guy who's like – and Jalen's – you know, I would say Jabari, Dylan – and Deshaun are all kind of that same old. Jalen yep. is bigger, yep. but Cam Selden's almost like bigger in a, in a length and, and a little bit taller, so it would have been nice to see. But anyways, continue. Yeah, and like you're saying, when I'm watching and I see Dylan Sampson make a play and I see Jalen Wright make a play, I'm like, perfect. That is your par now. That is what we expect out of you now. The only time I'm really going to notice is when you don't perform. When you don't take advantage, I saw both of them making good pass pro in those individual grouped up drills. Yeah, I saw both of them making great cuts. Jalen Wright made Arian Carter look like a fool in one of those drills, <laughs> which is like, hey, he's a freshman, right? Welcome. Versus an older guy. Welcome to the SEC. Yeah, welcome to welcome to football, baby. Um, but then you know, impressive like huge run out of Jalen. Uh, I definitely saw some impressive stuff out of Dylan. I love him as a pass catcher and get him in open space. Uh, I, I, running back room was par for the course. I, I was expecting this. I like the fact that I got to see Bishop. I wish I saw Cam more. Yeah. That's what I'm taking away from that. Okay. Okay. I, I was impressed. Like I almost, Deshaun Bishop was like an afterthought for me. It's like maybe because you're here in Knoxville and you hear about this and you're like, damn, he's putting up a lot of numbers and you're like, but he's at Corns. Like, is it is it real? Like, yeah. you know, you kind of have to notice. So seeing him in person, and he's been on campus, like I said, for a very short time, to see him, it's like, okay. Like, everyone wanted Justin Williams, Thomas, whatever that guy's name is, to, like, be a stud, be the four-star, be a big deal. We saw him at practice last year, and we're just like, it. we ain't mm-hmm. seeing it. Mm-hmm. Like, so to see Deshaun Bishop looking much yeah. better than a guy who was more highly ranked, and I know he's not here anymore, but it's just nice to see. Then, like, I love – everything about the player Jalen Wright. Like, he runs so hard. It's practice, and he just loves ball. He loves competing. I mean, there was a time where, like, 
he ran and he was like kind of close. Like I, I'm standing on the sideline. There's a bunch of other people over there, but he like breaks through, like makes a run. And I swear he was like, he was doing that thing where he's kind of like, you know, it's a nice play. So he's kind of like standing there, like kind of looking out in the distance, like, what's up, what's up. And he was like, it was like kind of in my direction. I'm like, he, he doesn't care who it is, what it is. Like, he's trying to tell me, like me come get the smoke if, if I want it. Like he <laughs> just, like, the sideline he trying. just, he just has that demeanor. And then, yeah, he broke that 70 yard run and you can see it. He starts semi high stepping. Like he just plays with a lot of passion. Yeah. Um, size wise, he looked, he looked good. I mean, he's still not, imposing but he looked like he's he's a good size yeah you know he, he is like a slight tick bigger than the other running back right. so he does make it make it feel a little bit different when he's running the ball yeah agreed agreed so uh yeah happy I, I think that's a good way to put it like par for the course like we were happy what we saw with running backs yeah and just would have liked to have seen cam selden but i Cam's, i didn't do my my pat and reed bacon walk by but i did do I did see him at least from afar and like he looked good. Like yeah, he's got a, yeah, he's yeah. got a good good frame on him for right. sure. Okay. Uh go offensive line. Offensive line. Great. Uh so we already talked about Sprags in the the day that he had. Offensive line as a whole, I thought played very well. The first thing I notice when I get there is whoa, look at all this depth. Look at all of the guys we have. We have enough to make freaking four offensive lines. Like it like there's so many dudes out there now, which is great. Um, and that starting lineup. Well, you you and Cade and Darnell were talking right when we got there, and Cade was saying in my first time at Georgia, his first spring or so, I think spring camp. Yeah, he said all, spring. He only had, they only had eleven. And you were saying at one point you guys only had nine. Yeah, there was a spring. We had enough injuries. We had nine dudes at yeah. practice. Like that shit is rough yeah. when you're at practice. Yeah. Um. So the amount of depth immediately made me feel great. That starting lineup is going to be, at this moment, Jeremiah, Spragans, Hoop, Ollie Lane, Mincy. This is Ollie's first year starting. This is his first opportunity to get that starting role as a left guard. And I knew Ollie from high school, and this has been a long road for him. This is his sixth year, and he's finally getting his opportunity. He is excited and ready to work for it. The one thing I was noticing in practice is he was struggling with pass pro. He wasn't doing that good of a job when it came to the one-on-ones. When it was third and long, there were times where he's getting beat, and he's leaning into it. He comes up to me after a team drill. I'm like, what's up, dude, man? How you doing? Good. Like We start talking, I'm like, here you go, bud. We're, you're starting left guard. Like, let's take advantage of this. Without me saying anything, he brings it up to me. One thing I got to work on is my pass, bro. I got to work on keeping my head out of it. That it, it, he already knows, and that's a hundred. Like, so much of the battle is understanding what your weakness is, so that you can work on it. I was so impressed that he did that. It made me feel more confident going forward because it really is like I don't know what's going to come from Ollie. I don't know what it's going to look like because he hasn't been out there. He has no, he barely has any experience. And you want, we, we, and all of fans, Tennessee fans want it bad for him. Yeah. You want it local bad. dude went to Gibbs. Like he's been working his ass off for five years. It's you want it for him. You want him to be able to do that. And, and the other thing is too, is like, and, and this is something for me, um, but like you, you're there and you remember and you see these guys and like sometimes, and this is a very, very small scale, like very small scale. So, you know, I can't imagine what it'd be like if you're one of the guys in the NFL who just retired and then you're calling a game on CBS or you're, you know, on a, on a, on a show breaking down people, because like we have been hard on Ollie at times or like Mm -hmm. we've been hard on someone else, but it's like, you know, that they are trying, you know, most of these guys are trying really, really hard, working really hard. And like, no one as an athlete is a harder critic than themselves. Yeah. Like nobody, I can promise you, took anything more serious than I did when, when I played. And that was at a very low jokey level. It's not like I was playing big time college or like in the NFL, Yeah. but like nobody's really hard on. So it's like seeing that it's like, man, I'm pulling for Ollie so much because you know he yeah. wants it so bad. Yeah, you so. know he wants it. Um, other guys, so transfers is what I was really looking at a lot today. We have three in the offensive line group of John Campbell coming from Miami, 
Larry Johnson come from Hutchinson Community College, and then Andres Carrick come from Texas. The most impressive of those three is John Campbell. We loved John Campbell. We loved John Campbell. I loved his attitude and his approach to practice and his want of learning and also like, hey, ain't nobody stepping to me. I think it is that experience he has at Miami. He's confident in himself. Now, he's a tackle and behind Mincy and Jeremiah. So he's not down in the dumps. He transferred here to play. He could have started at Miami. He transferred here to play, and he's second string, but takes it with a grain of salt, works his ass off, shows some attitude about him, and asking questions. He did a one-on-one blocking drill, immediately came back, started talking to Kate and Darnell about his footwork. How do I get it to this point? They start – Hey, yeah, make sure you're getting that first step down real quick so you can get that second step in there. You know, it's almost a just a slight weight transfer, just a quick boom, boom, boom. They're they're talking through everything. He's trying to soak up everything. At the end of practice, who do I see John Campbell with? Javante Spragans working their pass pro, working what's going on. How how do I stay square in this? How how do I keep my feet level when I'm when I'm doing this? He is approaching this like a job. He wants this. He wants to be there. So that's what impressed me the most. And I thought he had some great plays, some great one-on-one pass, bro. Some great stuff in team. I saw him once going against Pierce. Great square set. Pierce comes into him. He locks him up, turns and dumps the buddy. Dumps, goes over top of him, stands up, just starts doing the ice in my veins. My God, dang, I like that. I like that out of my offensive lineman. That's what I want to see, that freaking nastiness out of him. Swag, dude. But I remember has the has a technique, then the nastiness. That's what you need. When guys come in with the nastiness, like Spragans was a couple years ago, when it just felt like there's no technique involved. He's just trying to kill somebody. Right. Now we got the technique mixed with the nastiness. That's when you're such a potent offensive line, like such a good offensive line is when you can mix those two things together. Facts. So I was excited for John Campbell. The other guys, Larry Johnson, I, I think he has used his size to his advantage too much in the past. And he struggles with his, his pad level. He, he's very high. He opens up his chest a lot, uh, even in run. Like it's good to have a big chest in pass pro, but even in run, he's opening up his chest kind of coming hands underneath. And that's just not going to get you anywhere, no matter how big you are. Like, you're in the SEC now. It's different. Um, and then Carrick, I thought it was okay. They haven't met guard, even though he played tackle at Texas. I thought it was fine. I, I didn't really see a lot of strength out of him. I didn't feel like he yeah. is a good weight room guy. It, it, it makes me feel he probably has a okay bench, you know, maybe low 300s, but not, not great. Um, so I wish there was a little bit more out of him, uh, when it comes to that, but for the rotation wise, I see John Campbell being the guy that goes in at tackle. If Mincy or Jeremiah helmet pops off, rolls an ankle, whatever, you know, maybe Mincy moves over Jeremiah and then John comes in or John goes to Jeremiah's spot, leave Mincy in the same spot. That looks like what's happening. And then for interior, I think the next guy to come in is going to be Addison Nichols. I think if there's anything to mix up in those interior three, Addison would be one who can step in and play a role. Right now, he's the number two center. Right, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, so he's playing center and center alone, which is what he was playing last year when we went to practices. But that doesn't mean he can't shift his right foot back six inches and play right guard. Him playing center makes it to where he knows exactly what everybody's doing. And and injuries are such a huge part of football. It happens all the time. They're a huge part of football. That's why depth is so important. But, like, what if Cooper does need to go down? And so, uh, me being me, I'm thinking, like, you know, as fans, we're like, okay, well, we want the best five. Exactly. So, we're like, you know, Addison was a big-time recruit. He looks great again. Like, we saw him last year as a true freshman. He looked great. He still looks great. Like, Great size, looks like a good athlete. Like everything about him, you see him, you're like, that's a damn awesome offensive lineman. Now, yeah. we got to obviously see if that produces. But me as a fan, you're like, I want the five best. So, say maybe if there's a day that Ollie's struggling, I'm like, I'm thinking, well, why is Addison at backup center? Why do they not play him at guard? These coaches know what they're doing. Like they're, they're, they are smart. And like you said, he could come in if he needs to. 
but Cooper has had some injury issues. I mean, two years ago he had the ankle injury, unfortunately. Like you got to have somebody that can lead the room. It's a lead. lot harder to replace a center than it is a guard. Right. And so it's like just things like that. That's like as fans, we think, and we don't go, whoa, whoa, whoa. We need to think about the importance of depth and how someone can piece in. Exactly. Exactly. And then, you know, some of the other guys, I liked what I saw out of, you know, Grant, Brian Grant, who's still doing really good, still progressing. Uh, Sham God, Shamarad. Uh, I liked what I saw out of him. Um, uh, Vice and Lang looked good. I like, yeah. It did big boy, thick. He's 340, but doesn't even really look 340. I thought he looked awesome. Um, I thought he looked really good. Um, trying to like go through. Uh, I think Masai Reddick looked better. I, I think so, I thought Mo Clipper looked better than the last time I saw him. I, I, like I said, the depth in here is starting to get crazy. Like I didn't really like from that first practice we went to when Hypo first got there to now that has been incredible depth wise. And it almost bursted this year yeah. in the offensive line room. Yeah. It's, it's great. It's absolutely great to see. So um, I felt the same way about John Campbell. We both love Sprags. You know, we both love Mincing and Jeremiah and we're both pulling for Ollie, but we do both feel like size-wise it looks good out there, looks like an SEC offensive lineman. Uh, so even though I'm nervous about how they play, like I felt good today seeing him like, okay. Um, we've already talked a lot about tight ends. Yeah, I don't, I don't spend, think we need to. I don't want to spend a bunch of time except for the fact to reiterate is we are both extremely high on Ethan Davis as a freshman. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were so impressed, and I truly, truly think like this guy – can help next year. And I think in two years or three years, he could be one of the best tight ends. I'm saying potential wise, I've seen him once guys. I've seen him one time at practice, but I'm saying when you see him, when I saw him, I was like, damn, like this guy can be a nasty weapon in a hypo offense in a year and a half, two years, whatever. So anyways, um, now we're going to go to wide receivers. Um, so like we said, brew was not practicing today. Uh, Thornton was not practicing today. Um, Ramel's doing Ramel things. Squirrel's doing squirrel things. But then, like, the buzz about Nathan Leacox, like, it's it's real. Like, he's getting a lot of run. He's getting a lot of reps. Yep. It's almost like if you were just dropped in and didn't know, you would think that he uh, and Chaz and Caleb were all sophomores. Yeah. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Like, you would think, you would think all, he's part of that sophomore Right, class. right. But, like, big guy practices a lot. You heard his name a lot, whether it was coaches coming up and, like, congratulating him, but also coaching him up. Brew and him were sitting there talking and being coached up. Mm -hmm. I thought he had some nice hand catches in the back of the end zone when they were doing one-on-ones and then 2v2. So what you do is you'll have a one-on-one one -on -one rep over here. Then the quarterback flips and does a one-on-one -on -one rep over here. And they do that for about a period or two. And then they come and work 2v2 over here, 2v2 over here. Yep. Um, and so I thought during that possession, he had some, some nice plays. Uh, that was one of the plays where I was in the end zone and Ethan Davis really impressed me because they threw it kind of almost like a jump ball and he went up, spun, caught it, landed, looked like a receiver doing it. And when he hit the ground, like he turned and let, you know, whether it was Tamarian or Wesley Walker, they were like, what's up? Like, I'm here. Like, yeah. like it's like, yeah, as, a freshman. Yeah, as a freshman, like he has that, he yeah. has that, you know, that little bit of swag about him. Um, I thought Caleb Webb, he's impressed me both times I've been. Uh, Chase was running with ones today. Him and Caleb were both – like, when they went team ones, the receivers were Ramel, Squirrel, um, Chaz, and Caleb some. Mm -hmm. I don't – I don't. I can't remember if I'm forgetting anybody, but those those were the ones that were – Castles and, and – Jacob would kind of yes. in and out of like they're running up out out wide, so they would take a receiver out right. and stuff. So good point. No, 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 good point. Yeah. Good point. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not worried at all uh, about receivers. Um, like I said, uh we all know squirrels potential. I mean, he plays yeah, it, a freshman. And it's like it's like all these guys are icing on the cake. They're just yeah. they're the, they're the topping. We've got Ramel and Brew and Thornton, and, and like we've got those guys that we don't have to worry about. Right. Now it's like, all right, Webb, Nimrod, Lee Cup. Like, you want to step up and be the next guy? You want to be the Ramel from last year? Right. You know what I'm saying? Because we've got we've got four guys we're confident in. Brew, Squirrel, uh, Thornton, uh, Ramel. We got four guys already. Wait, did you just say Ramel twice? <laughs> Brew, Thornton, Squirrel, Ramel. Okay, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah I want two of them out there. Yes. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, so it's just like, Hey guys, just, just show up for me. Like, yeah. Hey, you want, you want to be somebody Joe's going to throw you a deep ball. If you get open, he'll throw it. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and let, and I know everyone wants to hear about those. Um, they all, they, they practice fine. There was nothing spectacular. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, you got to remember when they're doing one-on-ones and two V twos, I'm saying one-on-ones, meaning it's not ones, the one starters versus the one starters. I'm saying it's like, all right. Uh, Who's Reed, third in line? It, yeah, it's, it's, like, yeah, it's, it's like Reed Bacon and Kyle Kerbson go against each other. Uh, now it's Jacob Bourne and, um, you know, uh, who's a backup linebacker or G- T Lander. You guys go. It's just like, so when I'm saying one, one, ones and two V twos, it's not necessarily talking about the starters and backups and stuff yeah. like that, but all those guys like, Caleb had some nice, had a couple of nice catches. Uh, Chaz had a couple of nice catches. Like I said, Nathan had a couple of nice catches. Um, one of my favorite one on ones of the of the day was Kamal, Kamal being Kamal, and it was a jump ball, and and it was on the opposite side, so I didn't get to see if he did get it inbounds or not. But Ramel went up and mossed, and then him, Ramel, and Kamal start going back and forth with each other. Like, you know, was it in? Was it not? Great catch. I don't know. I don't think they called it a touchdown, but it's like it's still just it's impressive, and I feel very confident in the receiver room. I do too. It, it, and it's almost like you can't and, not feel confident with the offense, right? And Thornton is a big boy. He's, he's big. He's big. He's a good size guy. I really wish we could have got to like see him run his routes and do his stuff. You see yeah. him, and you're like, that guy is a wide receiver in this offense and can run like that's Gucci. Um, oh my gosh! All right, so that's everything on offense. Yep. Um, defensive side of the ball. Yeah, we're going to go defense. And I will say this, we haven't finished it, but I will let you know that we still will run down a few players that like people want to hear about, some of the newcomers, some of the freshmen, things like that. Uh, so now we're going to go defense. Um, do you want to start D-line and work back? Sure. Okay. Let's what, do it. Go, go ahead and what you saw D-line. Um, so there was like certain guys that I was wanting to look at, which is I'm so excited for Joshua Josephs. He is my next Byron Young. He's my next like – I'm gonna. I can't wait to watch him and see him just freaking you, dominate, mother. Oh my gosh! Did you see what he did today in one on ones? It was because he were they were doing the one on ones here. D line was here, offense line was here, and you were over there because I called you. I said, "Where are you?" Like yes. I knew you were gonna be over there, but I couldn't see. You. Did you see what he did? It was one of the nastiest things I've ever seen in a practice. I think I think I know which one you're talking about. When he went like this, yes. I mean, so guys, it's in so. The dynamic between offensive line and defensive line and then corners and wide receivers are second to none. Now, linebackers and running backs go against each other a lot, but it's not, it's not, it's not the same. And Joshua Joseph comes off the and I think it was against Mincy. I'm Uh, yeah, it was. It was. was. And he comes off the right side. So Mincy's playing right tackle. And when we got there, of course, right when we start walking in, we're starting to look like, all right, does he look bigger? Does this freshman look good size? How does this? How does this? One of the first people we see is Joshua Joseph, and what's it's fucking built, dude? He like looks bigger. Body, body looks good. Body body looks bigger. Got those long arms down, touching his knees. He's he's a problem coming off the edge, and they even the offensive lineman told you that last year. Yeah, and 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 I'm I'm gonna let you go, and I'm gonna let you go. I don't want to hijack it. I'll, no, I'll you're talk fine. About it, but no, no, no. When he he came off the edge, and he put a move. That literally in the middle of the rep, people, he puts a move. It spins Mincy around. By the time Mincy, in, in the middle of the rep still, by the time Mincy comes back, in the middle of the rep, jo- Joshua Joseph gave him a, a thing and finished the rep. It was it was the most one of the most disrespectful things I've ever seen. Literally, like, I'm going to try to stand up and show you. He, he, comes off the, he comes off the edge. He makes his first move. By the time, before he finishes the rep, Mincy turns around. He gives him that hand and then finishes the rep. And I was just like, that is some elite level. That's elite, <laughs> that's elite level talent, ruthless shit. And then after the thing, I think like Tyler, Tyler Barron, or no, it was it was Roman Harris yeah. who came up to him and they dab each other up and started like kind of dancing a little bit. Like, I mean, the D line was feeling themselves. Offensive line had some really good reps too. But anyways, continue. You know, you know, you know what that reminds me of? Me and you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It, and JV in, in high school, oh, man, we were a freaking just out there having the most fun in the, the world. The most fun so, in the world. I mean, you could because, you could because, you could have said varsity. I mean, no, because it was when just, you when it, you it, played more varsity your senior year, I didn't play on defense that much my junior year. I know, but we, these people don't know that. Don't don't make it sound like we're <laughs> don't make it sound like we're both seniors like chop liver playing JV. Come on, no, man. it was I mean, we were younger. I know, yeah, we were younger. Um, but he reminds me of Dante Fowler. 
And Dante Fowler is one of the toughest guys I ever had to block. Went from Florida. He's long like him, athletic. He has that attitude, that finger wiggle. That is exactly what Dante Fowler would do to dudes on the field, talking shit, dancing, having a good time. Joshua Josephs, it, like you said, a problem that I am so excited to see. Yeah, um, He is the new Byron Young to me. I'm so excited to watch him. Same thing for James Pierce. I think he's put weight on. I think he looks even better than he did last year. I still think he needs some strength added to him. Like I said earlier, John Campbell dumped the dude. So it's like he can still get got. Uh, Caleb Herring looks great for a freshman. I, I was excited to see him because we've said on this podcast before, he DM'd me after our video came out breaking down his film. and He was like, I appreciate what you said. I'm going to keep working and keep getting better. It's like, damn, look at this humble-ass dude who really all he cares about is being a better football player. Um, so I like the size I saw to him. I did not see much actual productivity out of him. I still think he's thinking a lot. Like in one-on-ones, I could tell it's like you didn't come up with a move to make on this dude before you went. You're just kind of free-balling it. Like, oh, if he puts his hands, then I'm going to smack. No, no, no. As a defensive end, defensive lineman, you need to come up with something before the – got to have a plan in place. you got to have a plan in place and a plan B in place. Um, so just a little stuff like that. We did not get to see Nathan Robinson and uh, Davian Hobbs practice. They were not practicing today, which sucks. I wish I would have got to see them. They look good, though. For they look good. Their Sci- thighs are nice. Look they good. look great. Yeah. They look great. Um, another new guy transfer Arizona State, Omar Norman Lott. I think he's fine. I think he's a little light, though. A little s- smaller guy. Um, and it, it doesn't seem like he's going to be the one – to come in and be the two defensive tackle that we need because that is going to come from uh, Eason, from Simmons, or DeJon Terry. That is who it's going to have to come from is those three guys. Amari Thomas has the opportunity to be a Tennessee legend after this year. Yeah, you stole that from me. I said that last night. Okay. Don't be Are stealing, you upset? Yeah, don't be stealing my shit. Well, do you want to go now? No, continue talking about the group. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. So sensitive. So sensitive. I mean, just out here stealing, it, stealing my content. Yes, of course. Um, anyways, I thought the group did well overall. I thought they had some very good reps and one-on-ones and were beating dudes off the ball. Um, I like what I saw out of Elijah in some instances. Mm-hmm. In others – I saw him get reached in some things. I, I, I saw him kind of get pushed back in others, and I think that is still like a – he's so freaking big. He gets tired. He's also not as quick laterally as everybody else, and like you can take advantage of your running outside zone, which is what they did, and that's what I saw. Um, But I'm expecting big things out of Eason and out of DeJon Terry in the interior. And then when I look at the exterior, it's Joshua Josephs, obviously Tyler Barron, and Roman Harrison. Can Roman step up and be even better of a player than he was last year? He brought some energy. He brought some pop. He brought effort. That was great. But I need I need a new Byron Young. Who's going to step up and do that? Because he's gone now. Right. So I need someone to step up. I like I, I like the defensive line. I like where we're at. That that second defensive tackle is my is the biggest worry. Yeah, at yeah. this moment. Yeah, because I don't think anybody today told me, "Hey, I'm him." Yeah, I, I'm I, the number two. No, I, I can feel that. Um, you started by gushing, and I jumped in about Joshua Josephs. I'm gonna gush, like I said to you last night, and it was because we were talking about practice, what we wanted to look for at practice, and I had mentioned, I said, "Hey, I hadn't told you yet, but I watched." a little bit of the Alabama game over. Like, who the hell doesn't want to rewatch that game? It's incredible. And so I I sat and watched it, and I didn't really replay or anything. Like, I just watched it. But, like, that's when I looked at you and I said, bro, Amari Thomas, like, he he's going to elevate. He's, he's better than a Michael Butler, a guy that I loved. But, like, he has a chance to be one of those very, very good Tennessee defensive tackles. And you can see him. 
and he's he's a little bit different in the best way, meaning like when you see a Jerome Carvin, fantastic college player, he has a potential and has a great opportunity to do something in the NFL. But it, but Darnell Wright's a little bit different. Yeah. And and it's like do you see defense tackles like, yeah, they're pretty good players. And then you see Amari Thomas physically and athletically, and you're like, he's a little bit different. Exactly. Like that's what I a that, agree. That, that's what a potential NFL SEC defense tackle looks like. And so it's like it's great to see him. I'm, I'm expecting massive things for him, from him. We both said, agree that the the second defensive tackle spot is is you know um, not a worry because I think Deshaun Terry is very quality. I'm gonna tell you two guys that you didn't mention today, and it could just be because I just caught like literally just out of yeah. luck when I'm looking. I'm you know say I'm watching one thing, I turn back and I just missed a Tyler Barron rep or I just missed a whatever rep. But I saw um, and I'm pulling it up here. So Amari McNeil, so he's number 88, redshirt sophomore, 6'4, 285. Like from what I saw, some of those reps, I thought, I thought he did well. I, I liked what I saw. Um Br- Bryson Eason had a really, really good rep, but he fo- but he followed that really good rep came after he got beat by Javante. And I was happy to see that. Like Javante almost dumped him. Maybe he did. I can't, I don't remember if, if it he went to the ground. Mm. And I don't remember if it was what, like a bat down or like an actual. Right, yeah. right. And so, so, um, but I, I mean, Bryson Eason's a big boy. Love to see that. Um, and then uh, I'm trying to think. I like Norman Lott. I'm excited to see what he does. And then you got Karak Garland out there again um, coming back. So, like, you're going to see a lot of good rotation again this year from, from D line. Uh, outside linebacker, I mean, excuse me, defense ends. I love Tyler Barron. The, the guy, like, it's almost like when he came out of college or out of high school, he maybe even thought that he wanted to be an edge guy with finesse. And he just realized like, yo, no, like I'm just, I, I'm, I'm a defense end, but I'm not flying off the edge. Like no. Joshua Joseph, no. I'm going to use. Who I am. Right. And it's like, he realizes that now and it's an absolute problem for people. So it might not be as um, watching. It might not be as like spectacular, meaning like, Oh, guy comes off the edge. He dips and rips, swims, gets a big sack. But for guys that love football, you're going to see Tyler Barron come off, give a strong arm to someone's chest, push him back three feet, and then make a tackle for a loss. Yeah, and he's just going to body people. And you're going to make you're going to see him affect the pocket a lot. to cause a sack. All right, where right. maybe he didn't get that, but he's pushing that tackle back, making the quarterback freak out, and then there's a sack coming from the other side. And I just, dude, I just love the the dynamic of the D line, like how those guys just want to eat, how they get like how they push each other and stuff like that. I love Roman. I love how that guy plays. I love how hard he, he practices, how hard he plays. And, you know, yeah, I'm expecting some nice things from him. Um, James Pierce looks a little bit better, but, like, he wasn't – there wasn't anything that, like, stood out special. Like, if you want to look at Joshua Joseph and James Pierce because they came in together, like, Joshua Joseph is ahead. Much, much. Very much. Right, yeah. right. But that doesn't mean that Pierce doesn't look better, which is good. And it just takes some time. It takes some people a little bit longer to develop sometimes. And that's not a big deal because they're both are going to, you know, graduate and finish playing college football. And like they could both have very successful careers. But yeah. one started a little bit more than, and that's fine. It's fine. Um, I thought the same thing with you about uh, Elijah Herring. Um, thought he looked good for, for a freshman. I didn't necessarily get to see him. Caleb. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Caleb. Caleb, Caleb Herring. I didn't get to see a bunch of reps from him and stuff, but just size wise, he looks good. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's like, you know, you got the bigger names on the D line, but then you got just a bunch of dudes that I think are going to be good, very good quality. Yeah. You know, and I, I mean, you can see the amount of rotation that we can have on that defensive line. It doesn't have to be two guys the entire time. Like you can, you got some depth moving forward now too which yeah. which is which is great to see it's it's a must it, it has to you have to have so it. we were talking about depth for for positions if there's injuries you have to have depth on d line for production that's it you have there's no way a defensive lineman can keep up and stay at 100 percent through an entire drive or an entire game entire half like you have to have somebody come give you rest come give you a little bit of break and it can't drop it cannot drop off. No. It has to stay the same. Right, right. So, um, linebackers, uh, go ahead, start with what you saw from linebackers. Uh, so, guys, I was really concentrated on Arian Carter, Elijah Herring, Keenan 
Pili and Jalen Smith. That's what I was like really looking at. Keenan Pili has stepped in as a one. He he's he's a guy, and I don't think we even expected this out of him. Watching his film, it was, hey, he's got experience. Yes, he was a captain, but he hasn't been the same since his injury. Now he's out there leading his group, playing very well. I was impressed by some push-pull mechanics he had and technique. You know, I saw him push-pull Jacob, which is not an easy thing to do, uh, to get off a block and make a tackle. Um, And, like, Coach Heupel even had him break it down at the end of the practice. Like, Heenan has come in, and I think it it is that experience that he has that has made the huge difference. But he's ready right away. He's ready to play. Um, so that was great to see. And it makes me feel so much better about the depth of the linebacker room. Um, Arian Carter looks great. Looks great. Uh, I thought there were times where you can tell he's a freshman where it's like, why would you like, why would you get out of position to where that guy can juke you out? You know, why would you lean that way and make it easy for the running back to cut back the other way? And that's just learning. That's just understanding a little bit better. That's just technique and in, in all of it, and which I think he can get down, and I think he can be really good. It's just okay. Like let's let's slow down. Let's work on this more. And you can tell that the coaches think the same thing because they're just always after every rep going up to him, talking to him, going up to him, talking to him. Hey, do this. Hey, do that. Hey, Carter, we, we can do that. We, like when a coach pays attention to you, that's when he knows you're good. Not, if a coach ever stops paying attention to you, you're in trouble. Yeah. Big trouble. So I liked what I saw out of him. Um, I thought Elijah Herring looked good today, man. I thought he was very athletic. I liked him dropping into coverage. Um, I thought he moved around really well. He eyes on the quarterback was great. He had a few batted balls where he made that play and jumped up and got it. Uh, also bringing the energy, talking shit, getting in guys' faces, getting the hype, getting his team excited. Hey, we just got a fourth down stop. He's the one holding his hand up. He's the one leading that defense. You love to see it. Who's yeah. going to step up? You know, we know we have Beasley. We know him already. Right. Who else is it going to be? Um, and I think Elijah could be one of those guys. Um, liked watching Jalen Smith. Still think he's got a ways to go. I wasn't necessarily like, ooh, Jalen Smith. But that doesn't mean he is horrible or that he had like a horrible practice. It was just, okay, okay. I can see your movement a little bit. I can see you dropping back. I can see you on your blitzes doing pretty well. But I didn't see anything that wowed me that jump out at me or anything like that. Right. So, uh, but – Linebacker group overall really well. Um, I love the fact that you, you notice this, the other guys are getting way more reps than Beasley is. It's because we know what Beasley is. The coaches know what Beasley is. They know what he looks like. Well, I think he also got nicked up towards the end of practice. Did he really? Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody's not paying attention. <laughs> um, but it's like, all right, who else can – who else can be here besides him? Right. So <clears throat> linebacker or so linebackers for me, you guys know that I was really hard on Keenan Peely. I watched like mul- multiple games of his yes. and I thought he looked terrible. I know. I like I thought I I mean there was just nothing about I I think I said it on when we watched or talked about him. I mean I think I was riding the bike one day for doing some cardio. Uh, watching on the iPad, I watched like three extended highlights of different games of BYU versus Arkansas, BYU versus like Utah and someone else. And so I would fast forward to the defensive highlights, make sure he was on the field and watch. And there was some like brutal stuff. I mean, it was like giving up big alleyway runways, all this stuff. Like I was pretty hard on him that immediately today you show up. Now, I don't know how he's going to end up producing and playing, but he looked like a – SEC linebacker. He he is a noticeable grown man. He looked the size. He looked good. And I thought he moved pretty well. I thought when he did get engaged, he got disengaged very quickly. Yeah, like I mean, he is he's strong. strong. Like he played, he wasn't necessarily overly physical where it was like every time he came up to take a blocker on or to make a tackle, it was like 
like it wasn't that. Yeah. But it was like he he would come up when he had his hands. It was it was so effortlessly shedding blocks. Um, I hope that he can be a little bit of a better tackler because there was times where I felt like he would go and wrap up well. And this could be practice too, where it's like they don't some up and let go. He, well, no, there's times where they don't. It's like it's it's very difficult. I, I'm telling you, if you guys have not ever played high school or college football and you got a coach that you're full go, you're full pads, but yet they say stay up. Yeah, don't go down. It's the most bullshit thing in the world because I'm a I'm supposed to make a tackle. Because I'm 180 pounds or 185 pounds, and I'm trying to tackle a guy who's 220. I'm chopping his shins out and wrapping up. That I I don't I don't just wrap up like that's not that's not how I tackle like that's not how DBs tackle. They're going like, shoulder to shoulder, right? To like, yeah, exactly. It's like oh, here comes Jacob Lawrence. Like yeah, let me just wrap him up. <laughs> no, I'll get I'll get rocked. So yeah. it's like, um, so it is a little bit difficult. But you know, there was a couple times in team and a couple different stuff where he would come in make it, and it was like he would make the tackle and wrap up. But then it was like a guy would maybe get away from him. But overall, like I was still very happy. And, and much more impressed than I thought I would be uh, size-wise, strength-wise, all that. So, as you said, Aaron Beasley, we know what he is. Very, very good player. I love that. I love him, that young man, a lot and how he plays. So, it's, okay, him and Keenan Peely. Then you would see uh, Elijah Herring coming in. I love I, Last year I was so impressed when I first saw him up close. I was like, damn, as a freshman, he looks already put together. Looks good. Plays well, moves well. I like it. He's going to be a big factor this year. Uh, and then when Beasley went out, and it was Keenan and um, Elijah, and then you would see Caleb Perry. Caleb Perry was a guy last year as a freshman. Um, I thought he looked good. He's got good size, and he was getting some run with the one defense, like we said, because Beasley was out. Um, now, for the freshman guys, so I feel bad. I wish they would all get better numbers. Uh, Arian Carter, forty-seven. That's not a bad number. He did look good. Like you can tell. Like he's he's got he's got that. Like he's not lost, but he's still younger. But he's he's got that good potential. Yeah. Um, then you come to uh, Jalen Smith. Probably not quite as far ahead as Arian Carter, but still looked good. I didn't get to watch him as much as I wanted to. And then you got T. Lander. I just wish Jalen Smith, thirty-nine, and T. Jeremiah T. Lander, thirty-eight, could get better numbers. Poor guys. I mean, those, I hate those horrendous numbers like that is impossible to have swag in those numbers. But <laughs> I did get to walk by Jeremiah T. Lander, uh, 6'2", 223 as a freshman. He, he's, he's put together. Yeah. Like, he doesn't necessarily like you're 10 yards away, you're five yards away. You're like, okay, he looks fine. You walk up next to him, you do a drive-by, walk-by, and, and he's, he's wide, he's thick, he's put together. You love to see that as a true freshman. Because you know what, Kyler? He might not be playing – uh, on defense, but that's a great thing to see for a special teamer. Heck yeah. For, for, Run down there and bust right. that freaking wedge on kickoff. Right. So it's it's good to see those things. So, yeah, I was happy. Uh, you know, all, all, the three freshmen, they looked good. They looked fine. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't give us any splash plays. That's okay. Um, but but we're fine. Like, we're happy with what we saw for three freshmen. Exactly. Yeah. That, I mean, you're not going to hold a freshman to the, you know, like, huge standard of of a Beasley. And, and, and yeah, yeah, it's almost like we're, we're, what we're trying to tell you guys is, like, is this guy look great and, holy crap, like, he's going to be able to start and help next year? Or, like, hey, we don't see it with him like we did with Justin Williams Thomas. Exactly. So, it's like, as, as, as newcomers, that's what you guys want to know is, like, it's not fun to say, hey, they look pretty good. And they're going to probably be a good player in a year or two, but, but that's what it is sometimes. Like yeah. it's hard for a freshman to be like, "Oh my gosh, this is a true freshman, and he's going to play next year." I mean, it is SEC ball, exactly. So you don't want your freshman to start the first year. I, like you want to be in a spot where you don't need freshmen to start. I, Alabama doesn't have a lot of freshmen that play. I don't know. I wouldn't mind to have a nice five star that steps in right away at a position. That means he's probably incredible. Well, I mean, yeah, but I get, I get, your, does. Point. I get but, your point. You know, yeah, I get your point. Um. So, yeah, uh, let me make sure I didn't miss any of the um, – Linebackers? Yeah, no, that was pretty much it. Okay, uh, DBs, do you, should you even talk? I mean, you can you can go, and I'll interject on a little bit of stuff that I saw also because okay. I think this is your expertise. This is this is your offensive line. Basically, basically they – they it's Nick Saban and then Reed at defensive back. <laughs> 
I'm joking. Basically, they I need hope- to listen to you and you alone. <laughs> <laughs> I hope, I, I think these people, like, I, I hope you guys know that, like, I'm very, very much just making fun of myself and joking. Like, I'm literally, the fact that he said this is your expertise, like, I, I made that joke because I, I, I don't believe that stuff. So I hope you guys know that we're joking. Mm-hmm. We're not. You just. Con- you've just. We're not. The, so we're not some conceited butthole. Yeah. So that, like, you have yeah. just played the position, and the only similarity I know from the position is being in a backpedal. <laughs> like <laughs> that's like that's all that I know about DBs. Yeah. So I do feel more comfortable when you talk about it because you know just literally just understanding the difficulty of things makes a huge difference. Like if you understand how difficult something is, then you're like, oh yeah, like I know how hard it is for that guy to flip his hips. And he did it really well. Yeah, I think people, and it's 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 okay because if people didn't play defensive back, they don't know how hard it is. And I have a, I'll, I'll call it like I see it. Like if I feel like a guy is not playing well during a game, and we do our breakdowns, I'm saying, hey, like he misses. But like there was times last year where dudes were getting caught on, and they were in perfect position. Matter of fact, in that Alabama game that I was watching just the other night, I. I I don't know if it was Deshaun. No, it wasn't Deshaun Rucker. It was Wesley Walker, I think, in the slot. And, like, unbelievable position. Matter of fact, if you're the receiver, he's here, hip pocket, and he gets a hand up, and the Alabama guy goes right there and just catches it. Like, I what mean, are you gonna do? Sometimes, sometimes they can make plays. And it's like, I know the fans get so upset with the defensive backs. Um, and so, depending on how you look at it, like, you guys are going to see a lot of the same names next year. Like, I guess last night I guessed who the starters would be. I was off by one. So today when they ran one. Toot, toot. <laughs> Tooting your own horn there a little bit. No, I was off by one. I know. You were great. It, okay, so the starters, what they what we thought and what it was today was Tank McCullough to Marion McDonald at safeties, Wesley Walker at star, um, Kamal Haddon at the corner, and then I thought it was going to be Christian Charles in the other corner, and it was Danico Slaughter. And I, and the only reason I didn't put Danico there because I thought maybe he would be at the star position or the safety position. I love Danico. There might not be well, last year when we saw him at corner. You, we both, we, we, we were, we, we both were impressed. Him. Yeah, I almost felt bad for the guy last year because I was like, dude, this guy's such a player. Like, is he going to get a shot? And I should have known. Usually, ninety nine point nine percent of the time, like Cream does rise to the top, and like. He steps in when Tate McCullough is out and plays well against Bama. He has one of the best highlights of the year against Kentucky. So, like, I love him at corner. And you, you got to you got to remember, like, last year playing corner was like some of the first time he'd played corner. Yeah. He'd been he'd been a safety. So, those those are the starters. The I mean, it's still you're still gonna you still have guys on the team that are like a Warren Burrell, a Brandon Turnage, uh, like I said, a Deshaun Rucker. Um, Andrew Turnantine's back for another year. Like it's a lot of the same names that we mentioned two years ago and that we're mentioning last year. So it's like, you're going to see a lot of those. I thought what I saw practice wise, like I thought they all practiced pretty damn well, honestly, like there wasn't, you know, any bad misses in one-on-ones or wasn't like, I remember two years ago, Tank usually practices well. And the one time I, he had a bad rep, which is just a rep, but Jack Jansen kind of murked him. And I'm like, Oh boy, this I'm like, this isn't what I want to see my my starting safety. Yeah, exactly. You know, get murked. But I thought that all the defensive backs looked pretty well. Um, like overall as a group, I was impressed. Yeah. Um, now guys that I had maybe been there a year, like Christian Charles, I mean, excuse me, um Christian Harrison, Rodney's son, like had a tip, he he had a pick today off of a tip ball. Mm-hmm. Nico threw it to Deshaun Bishop and it just went. Deshaun should have caught it, um, but it was one of those that, like, Deshaun comes out of the backfield, goes out, turns around. He's kind of like the last option. Also, Nico was, like, running, running like, through, through it. it. And, yeah. and it was a little hot, but he, he was here. He still should have caught it, but it was a great play by uh, Christian Harrison to, like, you know, eyes, a heads up, eyes up, make it, score. Um, but, like, Jordan Matthews, Ricky Gibson, Christian Conver, uh, or Conyer, Conver, Conyer, um, Conyer, my apologies. Um, got to see all of them. Like, and I was happy with all of them. Like, everyone knows how I gushed over Jordan Matthews' highlight tape. Like, I thought he looked fine today, but like, just for today, while we were there, like Ricky, Ricky was oh. he was playing well. He's like, locking. I people. mean, there was a one on one where he gets he's hit pocket. The the receiver has a chance to catch it. He gets a hand on it, and it kind of bobbles in the receiver's hand, and then. 
it as they continue the route or they continue the route, they both try to catch it. Like Ricky picks it off. Uh, I thought he looked super smooth um, when they did team stuff, when they did one-on-ones, two-v-twos. There was another one where I was in that end zone where um, they tried to test him over the top, and he had perfect coverage. Wide receiver didn't ever really even have a chance to make a play on the ball. Um, I thought uh, uh, Christian had um, – uh, what did you say his last time? I'm sorry. Conyer. Conyer had a really, really nice break on a ball. Should have had a pick. Um, but he was like he's moved well, he good yeah. flow. Like there's just a lot, a lot of I saw people. a nice break on the ball from him. Yeah. yeah. And there's just a lot of pieces back there. Um, even like even like uh um uh, give me one second. Um I I agree with you on some of that stuff. Like Jordan Matthews, I me, thought there was let me say, let me let me keep jump looking. In. So William Wright, number 36, was the guy that had to step in last year against Bama. Yeah. These are guys. These are, these are guys that are even walk-ons walk-on. that have been around the program, but like made some nice plays. And I'm gonna tell you right now, um, Will Brooks, redshirt junior DB, six one two hundred from Birmingham, Alabama. Guy's probably not ever really gonna play, but both of most of the practice I've been to, he's in good position. He's there. He knows what he's doing, and he and he plays pretty well. So it's like even the even the walk-ons or the depth guys, like they they play pretty well. Uh, and last, I'll I'll talk about is. Jack Lettrell, he was fine. Um, I was maybe expecting a little bit more of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was like I mean, in some of the one-on-one tackling drills, I wasn't as impressed as I'd hoped. Like he, where he, do you see him playing? Like, do you see? I don't know if I can see him as a star. No, they had him back at safety today, like the actual yeah. crew safety, which is probably because where- I think that's that that tackling that you're talking about, like. He might not be because you got to be a great tackler to play that star position. And he murked people like tackling wise and hits wise on his and, highlight. Yeah. Game. And that, that can come literally he's been on campus for like a night. Basically. <laughs> yeah. So it's like that stuff can come. I'm just saying today, like I wasn't super impressed with his one-on-ones. He didn't make some tackles. Then if he did make the tackle, it was very lackluster. Um, and then at deep safety, I thought he was fine. Like you could see he kind of knew what he was doing. He picked up you know, the game pretty well uh, and was in fine position, but like he didn't have any spectacular plays or anything yeah. like that. It was, it was fine. Like he was okay. They still have Cameron Miller back there at safety, good size kid. He's a younger guy. He's one of those guys when like the plethora of these seniors and red shirt seniors are gone. That's a guy that you're going to be like, Oh yeah. Like we kind of forgot about him. We were excited about him as a recruit. Now he's there yeah. and he could have a chance to play pretty well. Um, and then. What do you think about uh, Judah Lally? The other guy from yeah, BYU. Yeah. Because there were some plays where, and I don't know if this is just Ramel being Ramel, but saw him one on one with him get beat. Like Ramel beat him twice. So, yeah. So with Gabe, the tackling was the tackling drills, the same ones I was talking about with Jack, weren't great. There was one rep that was absolutely horrendous. I mean, our defensive backs coach was like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, this is. This isn't tap. This isn't tap off. Which a tap off means like you break down, you get yourself in position, and you tap off on their hips, or kind of like do the We're like full or, go or, or do like yeah. He's like this is full go. Like he literally looked at me like what the fuck are you doing? So I wasn't pumped about that. But then when you came back to the one on ones and the two v twos, I thought but I thought coverage wise he looked pretty good. He looked smooth. I thought he was well. But yes, then we went to team. Yeah, and Ramel cooked him twice. Yeah. Now. Ramel cooks a lot of people. Exactly. And so it's like uh, my thing is like I don't know what what defense they were in, but like I felt like maybe his eyes weren't in the right place. Maybe he was looking in the backfield while Ramel's running by. Right. Him. right. Yeah. So it's like – but I thought – I mean, I thought it was fine. I mean, he's a good depth piece. Um, I don't necessarily see him maybe as a starter, but he'll play. He's he'll gonna, play because everyone gets freaking hurt right. in the DB room. Right. So, so he'll play. Um, now, my guy – and I know I wrote him on here, but Jordan Thomas – I love what he did on special teams this year as a freshman. So I was excited to see him. You see him, and he's a good sized guy. Um, but I was a little bummed because he's one of those, like, I didn't think he had a bad practice, but I personally am such a fan of his and like him that I was like, all right, I'm ready to see this guy take a step. And in some of those one on ones, I didn't love some of the tackling. And, and honestly, he might be, I'm not def- necessarily trying to defend him. But like he might be one of those guys that's like this, like, yo, like I can't 
go full speed but not full speed like yeah like, like just cut me loose exactly let me let me go here. yeah like, th- th- those tackling drills were literally like hey go full go don't go to the ground which is the like guys are like what do you mean right it's like it's like it's pretty hard to like the I other think, guy's trying to juke me out right right <laughs> and so um i wasn't i didn't love that and there was a couple plays with him on the one-on-ones and 2v2s i wasn't necessarily in love with um you know, I'm excited to see what happens with him, though. Like, does he stay at DB all year this year? Um, does he ball out on special teams again? Uh, does he get a chance because of injury and take advantage of it? Does he come back next year and maybe we see him in a linebacker spot? You know, I don't know because he does have really, really good size, and I, and I like him a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, another guy uh, that's a freshman was John Slaughter. You liked his highlight tape a lot. I liked his highlight tape. I thought he was very productive, but I didn't know about athletically how I felt about him. Seeing him today in person, I felt good about him athletically. He is also another guy on that piss and vinegar team of Javante and Ethan and Kamal. Like, he's about that. Like, he wants to be good. He wants to play. Like, I'm pretty sure if he could play and just go strap it up and play tackle football every day, he would. And so, like, he had some nice plays, and whether it was one-on-ones, 2v2s, whether it was some team stuff and he was maybe, you know, running with the threes. Um, but I liked what I saw. Um, good size, probably not as big as I thought. It's like he's good size, but he's a little bit more narrow on the inside. Yeah. So if you see him from the side, he looks good size. And then if you see him from the front, he's a little bit narrow, but he's a true freshman. So exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, there was one other guy that I wanted to talk about. Um, oh, D. Williams. Now, D looked awesome in the one-on-ones. Like, it's kind of unfair him – I mean, people trying to tackle him. Um, but he looks so smooth. He looks so athletic. Um, nothing special that stood out, but played well. Like, I didn't see him get beat or anything, but I'm happy with him, and I'm excited to see kind of where where he goes. It's a lot yeah. – there's four spots, five spots, and there's a lot of competition. But like you said, someone's going to get a chance because of an injury or maybe not not playing well. Maybe someone starts against um, who the hell is the first game of the year? No, I was about to say North Carolina State, but it's uh, yeah, that's the second one. Um, it's in Nashville. Oh, uh, Virginia. That's it. So it's like, does someone go out against Virginia and not play super well? And so it's like, hey, we like you. You practice well, but like, we got to try somebody else. Like, you know, don't 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 put your head down. Like, you might get be, another opportunity. Right, right. So, but yeah, there's just so many guys back there. Um, that I'm excited about, but for this year, it's going to be a lot of the same guys. And I and I felt when you see what I what we see at practice, like I do understand it, why Tank starts, and I feel pretty good about him. I love Tamarian, I love Wesley. I'm have a love hate relationship with Kamal, like we all do, because like I understand. I mean, he is in the middle of everything. Like I respect him so much for how hard he goes during reps, yeah. how hard he competes. Like it's a one on one. And he's treating it like it's the third Saturday in October. Yeah. And then there was team individuals and him and Joshua Joseph and maybe Tyler Barron were kind of getting in a little scuffle with some of the offensive linemen. And like the same reason that you love Kamal, the same reason you get frustrated because it's like, hey, we don't need a 15 yarder. You know, you're getting your ass beat by South Carolina and you're and you're just and you're your John and like you're John. But it's like. It's that thing, man. Same thing that makes you makes him good, and what you like about him is the same thing. You know what I mean? It gives him that edge. Is the same thing that can kind of leave a bad taste in your mouth. Right. Right. So you take what you can with it. Was but, there was there anything from from your end uh, with the DBs that you saw? Like? Um, no, nothing that you missed. Um, that that I wrote down or or saw anything. You know, I, I was the few times that I looked over and just saw Ricky Gibson making plays, like I was like, hell yeah. Cause I was so excited about his film coming in. Like right. that is something that I'm like, dude, I know he's not starting right now, but he, he's one of those guys that we talked that you, you said, like you look for the ones that you think can play right away. The ones that'll be great down the line or the ones that just aren't there right now. I think Ricky would play this year. I think he could get some reps in this year, and 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 help. I would. Be, I wouldn't say he's going to be the the first string starter at the beginning of this season. I wouldn't say that he'll start more than four games. He might start two, but he might not even start a game. But he might rotate in. He might play that corner position when someone goes down. 
And I think he can hold his own as a coverage guy. I love his coverage skills. I there's not a knock on him, but I would be surprised if he played because of who's in front of him, not necessarily because mm-hmm. of him. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. But but yeah, listen, I mean, you, you never know how it how it turns out once these guys get going, someone goes down. Um, but anyways, yeah. So maybe that's, he wins, maybe he wins the number two spot. Yeah. So that's that's where things stand right now. You know, hopefully if we're lucky enough and fortunate enough, we'll go back and fall. Definitely. You know, see if somebody's transferred out after spring because they don't like where they are on a depth chart. Maybe somebody they bring one more guy in or two more pieces in uh, after spring and somebody leaves, you know, uh, uh, if they leave somewhere else and in hype and the boys are like, Hey, I feel like we can use them here. Yeah. Um, but, but overall, I mean, I'm excited. I, I, I mean, I'm super excited. I think um, there wasn't any, positions that I'm like super worried about you know I was a little Mm -hmm. bit nervous about offensive line but from what I saw today I I feel good I do too you know it it made me feel even more excited about the season coming up so I I love it I can't wait um we are going to go back in the fall look at him again I can't wait for the spring game to actually see him out there and see him working uh but yeah man super excited for this team so happy that we got to do this. And, ah, man, it would have been a little bit better if Tennessee would have won that basketball game, huh? Stop. <laughs> we had to at least mention it yeah. <laughs> since it just happened. But, um, Annie, oh. she made it the whole podcast. Yeah, she did. And then barked at the end. Good um, Derek Podman. You're listening to RTI Audio, powered by Rocky Top Insider.